how are you? I hope that you are all doing well and fine. So in this uh, series of our discussion, we'll be discussing about the JSFiddle or what we call the JavaScriptFiddle.net. So you have to just enter this in your browser. And you can see this dashboard. And at the same time, we have four um, squares here. We have the HTML. The ID for HTML, ID stands for Integrated Development Environment. We have the Cascade Style Sheets and we have here the JavaScript. So this is very cool. Why? Because in your JavaScript, you can use different types of uh, flavor. We can use the JavaScript, CopyScript, JavaScript 1.7, Babel. This is your um, JSX compiler for your React.js. We have the CopyScript 2, TypeScript, and Vue. All right, so let us uh, roll. For example, how to start? Well, you don't need any more to type the doc type at the top of that. Uh, well, this is already online op online application, so you can start here with the elements. Let's say h1, and then you have here, let's say, uh, hello world. All right, this is it. Automatically, when we run the program, you click it right here. Well, it's very easy. Now, well, if you don't have that account, you, call, you can go right here and sign in. All right, and all you have to do is to create and post. Um, use your username and password so if you don't have that one you need to go to sign up all right let's go back let's roll now uh, well you have just saw the example of the elements and produce it right here the result so let's say we have to create here the cascading style sheets okay let's use that element the body and we have the body for that uh, background color I think that's background color and we have here let's say blue Okay, let us check if that is correct now. So, when we run the program, let's say we have here the body. And uh, let us check the spelling. So, we have here the spelling. Okay, let us check that body. And then we have here hello. Let us run the program. What will happen for that? So, this is blue class. So, just imagine we are separated. If you create external file for this, then this will be part of the external point CSS. But here in this field, well, of course, no, uh, you can see the result right away. That is one of the coolest things that you can have uh, if you are using the GS Fidel. And at the same time, well, of course, you can use this to collaborate with your groups. All right. Now, I won't really what you call this uh, extrude uh, <laughs> writing the CSS code. But again, the purpose of this is how to manage your uh, program and at the same time um, produce the results. So let's say you have here the hypertext markup language at the top at the same time. Okay, let us change this background to light blue. Okay, let us change that light blue. Okay, so what will happen if that is changed? Okay, this is light blue. Much better. We can play, we can see the, the canvas. Okay. Now, what if we if we write the JavaScript? Well, of course, JavaScript is uh, the lingua franca of the uh, web development. So let's say we have here window that alert. Okay, let us enlarge the screen and then you have here hello so when we run the program all right let us check what will happen so when we run the program we have here the hello and then of course we have here the hypertext markup language so in normal uh, so in uh, a normal form of writing the hypertext markup language you are including it inside the HTML so you can use the script and of course we have the slash script you can still do that but here well, of course now this will be part of Another container wherein you call this program inside the hypertext markup language. For example, okay, let us do that. For example, we will ask the user to enter the username. Okay, what will happen? Now, let us assume that this is an external file of your HTML, and of course, we're just calling the CSS in another file. Uh, but if you look at it, they are in they are in the same page. Okay, so let us do that. Let's say we have here the body and we have here the form. So name of the form is, let's say, well, the name is uh, test1. Okay. And of course, we have the method equals to post and then action equals to. So we don't have the action because this will serve as our front end. At the same time, we'll be fetching the information going to our JavaScript. All right. So we will continue with that. And then from here, well, of course, we will enter, enter your username. Okay, that is the the question. So we have to put input. Okay, input type equals to text, and then the variable would be let's say username. U and stands for username, and then we have to uh, use the placeholder. Placeholder. Okay, and then enter 
user username okay username here okay after that what happened so we have the username right there okay and then we place here the required button so this is to force the end user to enter the field box right so after that what will happen now we will use now force the button and uh, use the on click and then we'll let it just create functions to evaluate uh, whatever we uh, entered at the top okay so you unclick here so unclick is a uh, valid one okay so this is the function that will be used instead of code okay so let us use that let us check click here okay it's button so we have the button at the bottom okay that's it okay now uh after this what will happen because we have the button when we run the program okay let us check it again okay hello and we have here the button okay so please fill up this form okay let us erase this okay this is no more uh this is not uh, needed anymore the hello world no where is that hello world okay so body form and then all right okay so we have to erase this okay now what's next so we have to uh use this area to fetch the information at the top i have already discussed this in my previous uh, javascript tutorial but again this is a bit different because we are here to to uh, test the waters meaning we are here to use the gsfiddle.net and at the same time um test this so you can use the title right here no fiddle title let's say uh, test application and now we have the description uh, test app for micro uh, application so this is the information okay now what will happen now let us create a program here we don't need anymore to infuse that script and slash click at the top but once we click this on valid one automatically will of course this will what validate the program okay now um, I don't want to use this CSS anymore okay I want to call immediately the framework of the W3 CSS it's a weak order compared to writing it okay because this is just like a micro type of explanation so we need to create a succinct type of instructions for the for the viewers i'll just go right here and of course for check for the bottom and then i will copy this now uh this is from your w3 uh, w3 schools and of course we'll copy this okay this add the link for that okay copy that and go back right here and put it at the top okay so we are using the framework of the cascading style sheets using the W3 CSS. And at the same time in the bottom class, now I just want to create an ornament style button right here. So therefore I need to uh, copy this now. So I need to copy this class for the button. See? Okay, so this is where I create the button. Okay, we'll copy that. Okay, go right here. This is free run. Then this fiddle.net, then I will what? Uh, use this. So this is where I button and I copy class WT block instead of block well I can use the green button so this is what you call the CSS framework now this is the technique now when we run the program again then okay, let's run it then we have here the button here the green button okay that's an effect okay so this is it okay when we enter when we click right here so nothing's happening please fill out this policy is the purpose of that required statement now let us ring the bell um after this what will happen so we have here the button right but again we need to put here another um information before uh before uh, closing the statement so we can uh, say input type equals to let's say we have to reset the information if you want to reset it okay value and then you put here erase the data okay so if you change your mind well of course uh anytime or soon Let's say we have here and then you erase the data of course it will come back to the previous uh, state of uh, the field box or the field text okay now let us write a program we validate this thing we validate this okay so this is now the field box okay so what will happen if you click the button of course like the process right here so let's say let let's say valid well let us check if this is uh, this fiddle that GS Fiddle is uh, also accepting the the arrow function. This is the arrow function class. No? 
This is supported by ES6, no? the ECMAScript version 6. So let's say we, we, we need to create a variable. Let, okay, uh, check one equals two. So I need to call the DOM document. Uh, this is what this was already discussed in my previous uh, previous uh, blog. And of course, we need to use the comment forms that is plural. And then we call the property of the form that is the test one. Okay, test one. And then in test one class, it has also its own child, the child to validate the data no? for the username. So the test, the, the property is the variable, the variable that was entered and that was fused right here. So input type equals text name equals to what? UN. That is the username. And then we fused point what? Value. Okay, that's how you do it. Now after that, what happened? Let us check if this is worth. Okay. So let us check it. Okay, if. Okay, let us, since this is a string class, the username, so we can use uh, if check one, okay, two. Okay, let us use the string of two upper case equals equals to let's say Arnold. Okay, let us check that. Then we can say first alert. Okay, that is okay. Okay, otherwise, of course, let us use it right here. If there are some errors, let's say not okay. Okay. Now let us run the program. Okay, so we have here let valid equals two. So valid one is part of our event right here. So until equals valid one, click here, form, okay, and we, if we run the program, automatically if we click, click this uh, button, it will check for the the UN that was entered in the form, okay. So this is the name of the form test. Let us check that test. Uh, that is that is test one. Sorry, let us check that, and then when we run the program again, okay, run the program, okay, run the program. Let us run the program. Enter your username. Let us check that. Okay, username. Let us test if. Okay, now it's updated. I will enter R node. So if I click erase data right here, nothing's happened. I will run it again. Okay, I will enter capital letter R node. So we compare these methods, check one, and invoke the methods to to uh, compare if this is uh, written in capital letters. Okay, if you click right here. So what happened? So error key missing title. So what is the purpose of that? So this is a big problem right here. Why? Because for one thing, let us check this missing semicolon. So uh, this is what missing semicolon. Let us check that. Okay. So this is another way of writing the the, the form. I don't know what happened, but let us check it again. And then click here. Okay, click here. Okay, there's a problem. So let us check that. Now, if check to uppercase, no, I mean to say this will check if the uppercase is Arnold, then it will check. Okay, I will change this to, let's say, uh, let's go back to the vintage style of writing the code. So let's say function of, let's say, uh, let uh, valid one, okay, valid, it's correct, no? The name of the, of the, of the program is valid. All right, let valid one equals to function so we have the function right there the open and close parenthesis okay let us run the program again let's run it so let us check it arnold okay that's great that's okay so it's running we need to say the other function is i don't know if it is supported or not in the this fiddle but let us check that uh, later on that is okay okay so we have here the error key missing title don't worry okay this is part of the console information so it is working now we will uh, again uh, rectify this what is this so there are some error right here okay we have the yellow error this is normal so test is uh, test one is a form is the name of the form right and of course un is the name of the variable variable so it's better written in dot notation what does it mean so we need to say instead of using this because we're using this in a normal way of writing uh, the, uh, for form validation we need only to change this to a dot notation how to do that it's very simple so all you have to do is to what erase this okay let us check that this is just to avert this symbol okay and then we need to use this so forms that and then so the name of the form is test one and the name of the variable is un okay so there you are we don't have any more the 
the, the, the notifications right here. We run the program again, of course. And of course, you enter your username. So we can enter it here. If we enter this and then click this, okay, not okay, okay. Because we compare, of course, Arnold to the check one. Okay, check one is a variable wherein we create uh, a declarative statement uh, for reading the value of un at the top. What is that? So, inside a form. So, here, enter username and we use what? We use un as part of the variable. Or in, uh, for, of course, we have here the un. Right? Again, we run the program. Okay. So, if I say Arnold and you click okay, so that's okay. So there you have it. I uh, I hope that you have learned something from this GS Fiddle. So you can use this as an alter your alternative uh, IDE. If you are online, then you can use this. All right. So please don't forget and subscribe this channel. Thank you so much for watching.